The door got me. The door got me. That is, hold on. One second. True love on the phone. True love on the phone. Okay, so we, do, we don't need that much gear. We need running shoes. However, we still need to stay organized. I am struggling, guys. I need, I need a good running bag. If you have any ideas, like I use an Ikea bag, a blue Ikea bag. I like it because it's open, but everything gets tossed around and it's just not organized. Do you want to see it? Do you want to see it? Oh, all right, Nike Vaporfly, 4% flying it, coming right up. But first, we got we to gotta get organized. We got to get organized. <laughs> If only it were that easy, if only it were that easy. All right, guys, less is more. It's, a, it's just a rule of thumb that I try to live by. So I just threw away some just stuff that I haven't used in months. Okay, see you downtown. Gonna assess the vapor flies. Let's go. One last, uh, one, one last spin in the Nike Vaporfly 4% Fly Knits before I give you my full review on the shoe, what I think, how they feel. So stay tuned, just taking them for one last spin for you guys. I wanna give you, I want the memory of the foam and the upper to be fresh in my mind before I communicate with you guys. So I remember, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. I will not sugarcoat anything. Hopefully you can hear me because it's a little loud. It's a little windy out here. There's leaves blowing. Remember a couple days ago, I caught a leaf in my hand. I just caught a leaf in my mouth. I wish I would have not spit it out to show you guys. Oh baby, all right, good to get these shoes back in their natural environment, the Vaporfly 4% Fly Knits in an urban environment on concrete and pavement. That's what these shoes are made for. They're not made for the dirt and trails as much as I love the dirt and trails, but uh, I'm gonna give you my full analysis back at the house, gonna go grab some dinner with the fam, and then I'm gonna break it down for you step by step, section by section throughout this shoe from the upper to the midsole to the outsole. So stay tuned. Whew, Denver, you are beautiful.
you picked up your up to Saint Lee. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Joseph Green. Chicken tostadas. Oh, ayo. Shredder, 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 the Nike Vaporfly 4% Fly Knit, and this is my full and official review. This is not my first impression. After running in this for the last, I don't know, three weeks, uh, I'm ready to review it. So, but first we need to go to class in order to understand the terminology that we're all gonna talk about, okay? So let's listen up, here we go. The shoe has three basic components. Uh, and now we will go into more detail on running shoe construction down the road. There's, it gets a little complicated, but we're going to break it down into three sections for right now. You may already know these, but I'm going to review. The upper. This is the upper. The upper wraps around the top of your foot, okay? And this particular shoe has a fly knit upper, basically meaning it's more lightweight and the actual... Um, engineering behind the the upper is a little different than other running shoes when it is in the fly knit category this is the upper essentially where the shoelaces are does that make sense the second section on a running shoe is the midsole okay the midsole is on the side of the shoe see this here this rubber this um, sorry foam on the side here this is called the midsole right here all right the third section of a running shoe and all shoes, but especially running shoes, is the outsole. So the outsole is defined as the bottom of the shoe, all right? And this particular shoe has no grip on the bottom, but we'll get to that in a second. Those are the three terms you just got to remember. Uh, upper, midsole, and outsole when thinking about running shoes. When you go to a running shoe store and you're talking to the rep on the floor and you're like, listen, I would like a outsole that has a little more lug action meaning traction or i would like it an upper that has you know more breathability so i hope you were taking notes and and now we're going to history class a little history behind this shoe this shoe was developed during nike's attempt to break two hours in the marathon essentially uh kipchoge is his last name i can never say his first name but kipchoge from kenya attempted to break two hours in the marathon um gosh last year 2017 and so they developed a shoe similar to this one not not exactly the same but similar to this one to help him give him more energy and more response in his stride in order to propel him forward toward that two hour barrier for the marathon a time that many people thought would never be broken so he attempted and he did not quite get it he ran two hours and 26 seconds which means if you know a marathon is 26 miles if he would have been one second faster for 26 miles he would have broken the two hour barrier that effort by Kipchoge led to the evolution and the creation of this shoe that I have in my hand right now and so based on Kipchoge's effort and many other elite runners efforts, does this shoe make you faster? We're going to pick up that topic in a second. But first, I got to read a comment from YouTube. You guys are amazing. MJ from Kansas said this. Hello from Kansas. Your channel is inspirational and genuine. Never yield or change. Thank you. As a mature, aka older life long runner of seven days per week logo, you are building something special here. I train in the PEG 35 turbo and four percent all have over 300 miles wow mj that's impressive yes all i've taken the four percent down to the foam on left rear heel and have earned back my roi i love it yes because they are expensive mj here are my thoughts on comfortable comfort and feel comfort and feel so 35s are great turbo greater four percent greatest ever mj you rock and you get it you understand like 
This is an interesting and yes, I would say special shoe. So the difference between last year's model, 2017, and this year's model, 2018, is that the outsole and the midsole are exactly the same. The carbon fiber plate, all of that is exactly the same. However, with the 4% this year in 2018, it's the fly knit upper that they changed so, so much. Essentially, there's a lot of different details we could talk about, but I would like to focus on the area that wraps around your ankle, and I love it. It basically feels like a booty. You know when you put a snow boot on and it, ha it just kind of wraps around your ankle and hugs your, your ankle? That's what this feels like. Um, and so the upper and the tongue are all one piece of fabric. It's not really one piece of fabric, it's stitched together, but that is probably the most significant part of this shoe that I love, is this, this ankle um, collar. I'll call it a collar. This ankle collar that wraps around your foot, and it feels so good. It just makes your ankle feel secure. If you've been watching this channel for the last two to three weeks, you know that I've been putting this shoe through a lot of time trials and yes, running on trails. I know, it's crazy. I know this is a road shoe, but I've been running on the trails a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit in this shoe. And so I have noticed a tiny little bit of breakdown in the midsole. I believe this shoe is at about 40 miles right now, maybe 45 miles, so not that much, but I am noticing just a little bit of breakdown in the midsole, midsole section, and that's to be expected to a certain extent when you're running on dirt occasionally and running hard in time trials. Underfoot, and what do I mean by that? So when you're running, like how does the shoe actually feel under your feet as you're moving forward? I would say, uh, first of all, it feels amazing a uh, good cushion, but it is narrow in the midfoot. So the midfoot is right here in the middle, and if it, you can even see it. See how narrow that is? I don't mind because I don't have an, I have kind of a narrow foot. But if you have a very wide foot, you might want to really reconsider this shoe as not the greatest option because it's so narrow. Eh, it may not work for you. And in addition, the stack height of the midsole, you might roll your ankle if you have a wide foot because it's so it's stacked up so high that um, I have almost rolled my ankle once in this shoe. So anyway, just keep that in mind if you're a wide, if you have a wide foot and if you're not exactly sure that your foot could fit in this uh, this narrow uh, midfoot section. All right, let's get to the good stuff: the carbon fiber plate. This shoe has a carbon fiber plate built inside to this shoe. I want to see it so bad. I want to see it so bad. Basically, it's a very stiff shoe. You, you, okay, guys, it's a stiff shoe. Beware. Like, it's, I can't, I, like, if I, I don't want to bend it, but I, if I did try to bend it, it would be very difficult. But, like, I'm pushing pretty hard right now, and it's not flexing very much. Why did they do that? Essentially, this shoe is definitely designed to put you up on your toes and it's designed, the carbon fiber plate inside this shoe is designed to alleviate the bending that takes place in the metatarsals. So what are the metatarsals? Those are the bones on the top of your feet. So it's the, the carbon fiber plate is designed to basically replace the metatarsals and your toes um, the the effort and the flexibility in your toes and your metatarsals to propel yourself forward. So basically, you're saving energy and you're actually picking up energy uh, from the carbon fiber plate. And I know I'm getting a little bit into the weeds here, but I can really feel it when I'm out there running fast. Running slow, not so much, but when I'm running fast, I can feel that carbon fiber plate under my uh, under my my toes and under my metatarsals and I don't know is it making me faster and yes that is the question of the day do you believe the hype is this shoe making elite runners and just normal everyday runners faster and to drive my point home here's a graphic I found from Rolos on Twitter essentially this graphic is showing the top six finishers from the Chicago Marathon in the men's division um, I don't I'm not sure about the ladies actually ladies out there if you know like what were the ladies wearing in the top 10 um, but it shows that they were all wearing this shoe and yes they ran fast however I would be fascinated to see 
what were the top 100 finishers wearing, and even the top 1,000 finishers wearing in the Chicago Marathon, and then kind of get some percentages um, as to, you know, who was wearing Adidas, who was wearing New Balance. Obviously, like Nike has a great uh, athletic um, representation through their elite program. So it may, is it just the athletes or is it the shoe or is it a mixture? I don't know. I don't know. It's fascinating, though. It is fast. This graphic is fascinating. I could give you all the specs on this shoe, but I, I don't need to do that. You can go on the Nike website, read up on all the all the technical side of this shoe. I just want to share my gut reaction. Essentially, I'm going to give it the score out of 10 and eight and a half. That's a good score. That's a good score. Anything under six is kind of garbage. Anything over eight, I would say, is approaching greatness. Um, I've never given a shoe an, a score of nine. I'm excited and I'm actually, yes, going to take this shoe out in a half marathon time trial on Saturday. So I'm going to go to a park, Washington Park, Saturday morning, probably start at 9 a.m. In case you're around, let's go run. And I'm going to do a half marathon time trial. I'm going to run as fast as I can. So come back to the vlog and you'll see me attempt to run fast in this shoe as fast as I can. And we will see because I've, I've done a one mile time trial, a 5K time trial, and a 10K time trial in this shoe. All the videos are up there. But what I want to now attempt is to take this shoe to the, to the test at a distance that it's actually designed for. This is designed for road, for half marathons and marathons especially, but I'm gonna do a half marathon time trial on Saturday, so stay tuned. And yes, let's connect on Strava so that we can um, communicate. I hope you gleaned some beneficial information from this video. If you did, hit the subscribe button. Just so you know, I publish a new video every single day, so there's plenty of content to watch. In fact, go watch this playlist with all the videos about this shoe up in that upper right hand corner. Essentially, this YouTube channel is all about the comments. Yes, I feel like the videos are decent. I hope they're getting better. I hope you're uh, seeing an improvement in value for you, the viewer. But frankly, all I care about is your ideas and your thoughts and your opinions about a lot of different things, about life, about running, and yes, even about gear. So the question of the day is really critical. If you have 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, some of you, you know, take five minutes, I feel like, to answer the question of the day. Whatever you have, I'd love to hear your opinion, opinions on the question of the day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And yes, today's keyword, thank you for watching this long, is fly. Not fly net, well, if you feel ambitious, but just fly because I'm hoping this shoe makes me fly on Saturday in the half marathon time trial. Come back for that video. I love you guys. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. We will see you tomorrow.